Okay, so this is a, a very important point. Um, if anyone ever tells you, and that's where the, these practitioners are saying, um, look for somebody, I don't care if it's a nurse, PA, doctor, DO, MD, whatever, whatever. Uh, the title is not relevant. What's really relevant is, are you, are they looking for information? So we have something here that's a common problem. And that is, oh, you have atrial fibrillation. There's nothing you can do about it. We can just burn part of your heart off um, so that so that it doesn't uh, go irregular anymore. Um, and, uh, and, and uh, but there, there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing you can do to fix it or repair it. All we can do is burn it and destroy it. Um, or, or I had a heart attack and, and part of your muscle is gone and, and you know, it's just gone. There's nothing you can do about it. And so if anybody tells you there's nothing you can do about it and you're still alive, then there's something wrong with that, right? Because as long as you're alive, there's something you can do about it. Um, living is growing, it's improving. And, and so you say, okay, I had a really bad heart attack, but I got bypass surgery. You wake up in a hospital and you're all uh, in a lot of pain. Um, and then they say, well, we saved your life uh, um, and, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that's what they told um, uh, former President Bill Clinton about his heart when he was getting, after he had bypass surgery and it was getting blocked up again. They said, ah, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. But guess what? He did find something he could do about it and it got better. You can get better. After you've had a heart attack, you can get better. Um, I had a uh, patient yesterday, um, his dad uh, is 74 years old and he hikes up in the mountains in Washington state. Uh, and his doctors keep telling him, oh, don't go up in the mountains. That's really bad for you. High altitude, low oxygen. You've had a heart attack. Not a good thing. Uh-uh, don't do that. And he's like, you guys, you don't got, <laughs> not like this. You guys don't know anything. Um, he had his first heart attack at age like 48 years old, 44, 45, somewhere in there. He's in his 40s and he had a heart attack. And his doctor said, don't do anything, don't do anything. You're gonna die if you do something. And he just kept telling him, uh, he kept doing more and more and more, improving his exercise, improving, doing more exercise, eating well. Uh, he's eating two meals a day, that's all he does. Uh, he does intermittent fasting. Uh, and, uh, and so now here he is in his 70s, he's almost doubled his age from his first heart attack because he didn't listen to all those people that said, that said you got to rest, there's nothing you can do about this. It's just going to get worse over time. No, he got better and he doesn't have chest pain and he doesn't have heart, heart disease and he hasn't had another heart attack uh, and, and he's doing high altitude. So the answer to your question is if you're alive, you can get better if, if you understand how and you know what to do. Awesome. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, about our solution kit. So you've had a heart attack, you wanna repair your heart. Is this where you go? Is this where we start? What do you think? This would be a good place to start. So uh, in the Healthy Heart Solution Kit, the things that we're talking about are, what are the things that uh, injure the heart? And um, there are uh, uh, several things to consider when you're looking at, why did I have a heart attack in the first place? Do I have a genetic abnormality? Is there some gene in my that I have that is uh, causing me to get clots in my vein, uh, arteries and block blockages in my heart? Um, uh, do I have uh, uh, a lot of stress? We talk about stress and how important that is. Um, adrenal stress is something that prevents you from repairing the clogs in your heart. And so if you don't have um, if, if you have a lot of stress, then you don't repair very well. You don't repair your arteries very well, and you end up with what? Well, clogs in your in your in your uh, your arteries. And if that's in the heart, that's a big deal, right? Um, but the other thing about stress is the angina. Remember that we talked about this a lot. How the blood vessels constrict and stop the blood flow to the heart. And like 60% of heart attacks are not clots but constriction of blood vessels. Um, and so that's an important thing. Um, we talk about the uh, um, unimportant things, like things that you don't need to focus on, like cholesterol and blood pressure. Um, or if, if you look at them, like if you have high blood pressure, ask the question, why? 
don't just like start taking pills for blood pressure. Go, why do I have blood heart blood pressure? Like the guy today, this morning that I called him early, early in the morning. And uh, and he, he told me the story of what happened with his high blood pressure. I took that medication and that medication. And and those were the medications that were causing the problems. And uh, and his blood pressure went up because of the medication he was giving. He, he ended up with low potassium. So, uh, so uh, we figured out what that blood pressure problem was, and now he doesn't need medications because he just has to get enough potassium and keep his ratios balanced. Um, knowing why is what's important. So as you go through the Healthy Heart Solution Kit, you're going to look at the different things and say, does that apply to me? 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 And then you're going to apply the things and you're going to get on a good program. You're going to take the right supplements. You're going to eat the right foods. You're going to exercise regularly. You're going to increase your exercise. Why increase? Because that's what life is. Life is growth. If you're not growing, you're not living. So uh, so if anybody tells you, oh, don't do anything, stay in bed. Guess what? They did research on bed rest. Guess what? Bed rest helps. Yeah. So that, like, if you take all the illnesses that have, have been chosen for bed rest, things like the doctors used to told my aunt when she was like five or six years old, she had rheumatic fever. And they told her, you have to be in bed. Like you can't ever get out of bed. Uh, you have to use a bed pen. This is a little girl, right? And they told her that um, for six months, she couldn't get out of bed. And, uh, and you know what? It affected her life. Her metabolism completely changed at that time. She ended up, she got obese. She ended up getting dying of cancer at age 54. She was really young. And I'll bet that a lot of that, because cancer is a metabolic disease, um, I'll bet that that all started from being in bed for that long. So, uh, the rheumatic fever, um, even like uh, pregnancy complications, um, uh, all kinds of, of, of uh, illnesses, infectious diseases, and, uh, and uh, problems with arthritis. And so of all of those things that doctors have recommended bed rest for, guess, uh, guess what helps? I guess what bed rest is good for? Nothing. Nothing. You're right, Cheryl. Nothing. There is. There wasn't one thing that bed rest was helpful for. So don't go to bed. In fact, the people that, that heal the fastest, that heal the best, like after surgery, are the ones that get out of bed the soonest. That, that, the, they're the ones that do better. The doctor says, no, you have to be in bed for two weeks. They go, forget that noise. I got there. I'm not laying in bed for two weeks. And they get up and walk around and start doing stuff. And they heal. They don't get infections. They don't get complications. Uh, they, they, they do better. They, they heal faster. So that's the thing to consider is when you're alive. And, uh, and if, if you have heart disease, fix it. If you don't have heart disease, avoid it. 